move on to Ukraine. National security begins with border security. We have said that all along. That's, that has been my comment since late October. It is my comment today. Are you What's worried about the constitutional precedent that could be set by you to New York? Is that going to come back to bite you in the tables, Arthur? I am not. That is MAGA Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, also known as Donald Trump's coffee boy, roaming the halls of the Capitol, saying that he's going to block funding to Ukraine because the Ukraine funding is not tied to the border security bill, despite the fact that MAGA Mike Johnson and the MAGA Republicans at Donald Trump's direction killed the bipartisan border deal which had its lead negotiator, the Republican senator from Oklahoma, James Lankford, who Donald Trump previously endorsed in 2022 for being tough on the border, who gave the Republicans in a bipartisan border deal that they killed their wish list of provisions. Here is MAGA Mike Johnson, though, at a press conference right here, and he's being asked, uh, do you think that you're the reason, MAGA Mike, that you're blowing it, that the MAGA Republicans are just screwing the Republican Party by killing all productive legislation out there? Is that why you lost and why the Republicans lost in New York's third congressional district race and why Tom Suozzi, the Democratic candidate, not only won but overperformed? Here's what MAGA Mike had to say at the press conference. Play the clip. This handle this issue and effectively give Democrats something to campaign on. No, not at all. Look, the American people are with us on this issue. I mean, they are with us because they understand you have to actually solve the problem. And the product that was produced by the Senate did not solve the problem. You've all heard us hammer over and over H.R. 2, right? That was our signature piece of legislation that we passed many, many months ago, last year. And, and the reason that all those components are important, again, is because they, they have to fit together. That's got to solve the problem. You have to address all of them. The Senate bill didn't do that, and that's why it was rejected. Heck of a job, MAGA Mike. Also, zero self-awareness, you know, and the MAGAs just double and triple down into their Trumpian, dystopian, loser nightmare instead of actually learning the lessons from each and every election and referendum that has uh, come up where we see a rejection of MAGA. We see a rejection of Donald Trump, who's out there talking about how he wants to see Vladimir Putin destroy NATO and he would encourage Russia to do, quote, whatever the hell they want to do with our NATO allies. Here's MAGA Mike Johnson laying out a number of additional excuses why uh, the Republican candidate Mazi Pillup lost, and he blames the snow, everything other than Donald Trump, the actual reason, and, and, and the fact that y'all have gone MAGA, and that Democrats are actually offering productive solutions right now. Play the clip. The, the, uh, the result uh, last night is, is not something, in my view, that Democrats should celebrate too much. Think about what happened there. They spent about $15 million dollars to win a seat that President Biden won by eight points, they won it by less than eight points. Their candidate ran like a Republican. He sounded like a Republican talking about the border and immigration because everybody knows that's the top issue that is on the concern, uh, the hearts and minds of everybody. That incumbent had been a three-term member of Congress and he had a 100% name ID and a deep family history in the district. Our, our candidate was relatively unknown uh, in that comparison and had a very short runway. Um, she, she ran a remarkable campaign. Um, you know, there was a weather event that, uh, that affected turnout. There are a lot of factors there. That is in no way a bellwether of what's going to happen this fall. We are absolutely convinced. I've been to 17 states in the last 12 weeks. I'm telling you, whether I'm out west, on Long Island, uh, in the deep south, mid-south, in midwest, it doesn't matter. There is, a, there is a fervor among the American people. And it is bipartisan. People know that this country is on the wrong track. 74% in the latest poll believe that the, the country's on the wrong track. Why? Because of the leadership from the White House. They see what is happening. President Biden has the lowest approval rating of any president who has ever run for re-election. I think it's 37 percent in the latest poll. It, it, it goes down precipitously. And the reason is because of his, all the things we talked about today. It is a total lack of leadership. And now more and more Americans have made their own opinion about his fitness for office. And so I think that's going to have a big effect in the fall as well. So New York 3 uh, was, uh, was what it was, but that has nothing to do on the efforts going forward. Here's MAGA Mike being confronted at this press conference that, MAGA Mike, you're the one who killed the border deal. 
you killed it and Donald Trump is bragging about killing it and telling you to kill it. That's what went down. Watch MAGA Mike's response, play the clip. HR2 is, is dead in the Senate. You yourself were part of killing the Senate compromise bill. You called it dead on arrival from what you knew. So my, my question to you is, while you say there need to be solutions, what are House Republicans doing to get to a solution on the border and on Ukraine? Or are you going to actually do nothing? What is your proposal? What are you doing? No, we're, we're addressing each of those issues. They're important issues on the table. We are not going to be uh, forced into action by the Senate, who in the latest product they sent us over does not have one word in the bill about America's border. Not one word about security. The reason that the other one was dead on arrival is because it did not meet the moment. It did, would not have solved the problem. You can't leave giant loopholes and codify some of the things that have gotten us into this situation. So what we're doing right now is we, the House is working its will. The House Republican Conference we just met an, an hour ago uh, with all the members and there are lots of ideas on the table of how to address these issues. We will address the issues. We'll do our duty on that matter and, uh, and, and all that begins in earnest right now. Um, we have to address this seriously, we have to actually solve the problems and not just uh, take political posturing as, as has happened uh, in some of these other corners. Mr. That Mr. Well, thank you. What about thank you. government shutdowns, sir? And again, showing absolutely zero self-awareness, here is MAGA Mike saying that a man who doesn't know how to handle classified documents should never be able to obtain the position of the presidency. They, they live in such a bubble, a Fox right-wing... Mr. Potato Head, Green M&M, getting angry at Bud Light and Disney, uh, get, spreading Taylor Swift conspiracy bubble that they have no clue that they just frankly sound like a bunch of weirdos and like moronic. Play this clip. On Thursday, as you know, the special counsel confirmed that President Biden mishandled classified materials in a way that presented serious risk to national security. He broke the law, but he's not going to be charged. Why is that? Well, Special counsel said that it decided not to indict the president in part because there are significant limitations on his memory and a jury wouldn't convict him because he would be presented as, quote, an elderly man with a poor memory. That, that did not inspire confidence among the American people. It's of great concern to us. Ultimately, they're indicting, remember now, the DOJ is indicting one president with politically motivated charges and they are now carrying the water for another amid very similar allegations. A man too incapable of being held accountable for mishandling classified information is certainly unfit for the Oval Office. And everyone in this room, if you just ask yourself that question, you will come to the same conclusion. Speaking of sounding like a bunch of weirdos and moronic after yet another uh, indictment, if you will, on the state of the Republican Party that's gone full MAGA, um, after four indictments against uh, their criminal cartel leader, Donald Trump. Here, this literally happened earlier in the morning, MAGA Mike Johnson then appoints Marjorie Taylor Greene to act as the speaker pro temp to preside over the House of Representatives and lead the day in the House of Representatives. Marjorie Taylor Greene, y'all, this is who the Republican Party is. This is who they anoint the worst of the worst. Play the clip. The Speaker's Rooms, Washington, D.C., February 14th, 2024. I hereby appoint the Honorable Marjorie Taylor Greene to act as Speaker Pro Tempore on this day. Signed, Mike Johnson, Speaker of the House of Representatives. Pursuant to the order of the House of January 9th, 2024, the Chair will now recognize members from lists submitted by the majority and minority leaders for morning hour debate. Yeah, I think a bunch of swing voters look at that and go, wow, Marjorie Taylor Greene, that's what I was looking for, MAGA Mike, thank you. Because why we keep rejecting Republican candidates is we need to see more Marjorie Taylor Greene, Tom Bonier, uh, one of the best data analysts out there and crunching the numbers in these political races says, I'm enjoying the Republicans trying to rationalize their New York 3rd Congressional District loss by saying that their candidate used to be a registered Democrat. Donald Trump was a registered Democrat for eight years up until 2009. Take a look at this poll, by the way, from Monmouth. National poll. 
nearly one in five Americans, 18% believe that Taylor Swift is part of a covert government effort to re-elect President Biden. And shocker, among this group are the MAGAs, who believe that uh, uh, Donald Trump really won in 2020, probably that the earth is flat, and any other of the unhinged conspiracies that are mainstreamed on Fox each and every single day. By the way, I guess the MAGA Republican way to try to fix this all is... Let's make Lara Trump the head of the RNC. You can't make this stuff up, folks. Uh, Donald Trump is demanding, and when he makes a directive, his coffee boys follow. Lara Trump says that uh, she's now running as the co-chair of the RNC. Donald Trump is saying that she'll be the co-chair and that every penny that the RNC uh, uh, has will be worth it. And Lara Trump explains what that means. Play the clip. If I am elected to this position, I can assure you there will not be any more $70,000 or whatever exorbitant amount of money it was spent mm -hmm. on flowers. Every single penny will go to the number one and the only job of the RNC. That is electing Donald J. Trump as president of the United States. As Aaron Ruper says, take a look at this nightmare rotation. Uh, what the MAGA Republicans did do on another day where they got embarrassed in a special election, though, is they decided that they were going to impeach the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, which they did by one vote that they had to rush um, while one Democratic member wasn't available. And they tried to do it right before Swazi won because that's what the American people were looking for. Not actual solutions, but, you know, you know, high-fiving over uh, impeaching someone where a cabinet official hasn't been impeached in 150 years, while that cabinet official, in this case, Alejandro Mayorkas, is trying to negotiate a bipartisan border deal, by the way. But, yeah, don't let the facts get in the way of a MAGA Republican uh, deranged PR stunt. And, you know, of course, uh, Donald Trump's statement that he put out after uh, the Republican loss, Donald Trump said, quote, I want to be loved. That's what Donald Trump said, quote, I want to be loved. And he says, MAGA is most of the Republican Party. They stayed home. And he basically said that he was disrespected by Mozzie Pillup, who Donald Trump referred to as a very foolish woman. He says that Mozzie Pillup who ran the Republican candidate, she was a very foolish woman. And then Donald Trump says, I want to be loved. I mean, yeah, I think people look at that and go, what the hell is this? Freaking weirdo? Like, what is what, you, what is this? It's not conservative. It's some, some strange stuff. Weird stuff. Voters are getting it. Here's how Dana Bash described it on CNN. Play the clip. I heard from voters that they were very, now these are obviously, um, very well-informed voters, right. but they were they were at the polling station. They were voting early, and several of them said to me that they don't uh, want to vote for the Republican because it's clearly impossible to get a solution on the issue of immigration. They said border, uh, the border problem, the immigration issue, uh, the migrant issue in their district was the top issue for them, and that the fact that Republicans killed that bipartisan deal. Uh, put them over the edge to vote for Tom Swazi, and immigration was their top issue. Another reporter on CNN right here, play the clip. You're looking for trend lines ahead of November, and you're hoping to hold on to what is a swing district for yourself as well. Obviously, I talked to two voters today who voted for Donald Trump in 2016, turned around and voted for the Democrats in this race voted for Tom Suozzi because they said his message on bipartisanship and the fact that House Republicans have really struggled to pass legislation over the last couple of weeks impacted the way they were looking at this race. And if you're a Democrat running in these swing districts, running in a suburban district, that's the kind of message, that's the kind of playbook that you want to emulate in November. Yeah, voters see this is weirdo. This is weirdo Donald Trump. Donald Trump's an adjudicator rapist. It's found liable for $83.3 million as well for defaming his rape victim. Before the Super Bowl, in addition to attacking Taylor Swift, where Donald Trump said that he was the one who made her her money. He was the man. He said, I'm the man who made you your money. You should be loyal to me. Donald Trump posted that before the Super Bowl. 
Donald Trump then summoned, not making this up, Donald Trump summoned a bunch of little girls, not making this up, summoned a bunch of little girls, cheerleaders, to dance and frolic in front of him at Mar-a-Lago. And then his campaign bragged about it. Local, a local band, and you see the, the girls dancing in front of an adjudicated rapist. Play the clip. By the way, here is Mitt Romney talking about exactly what Donald Trump did in killing the bipartisan border deal. Play the clip. Oh, I, I, think, I think the border is a very important issue for uh, Donald Trump. Uh, and the fact that he would communicate to uh, Republican senators and Congress people that he doesn't want us to solve the border problem because he wants to blame uh, Biden for it is uh, is really appalling. But the, but the reality is that, that uh, we have a crisis at the border. The American people are suffering as a result of uh, what's happening at the border. Uh, and someone running for president ought to try and get the, uh, you know, the problem solved as opposed to saying, hey, save that problem. Don't solve it. Uh, let me take credit for solving it later. Here is Donald Trump taking credit for killing the bipartisan border deal. Play the clip. So on Monday, go vote. Early voting, go vote. Let's not forget that this week we also had another massive victory that every conservative should celebrate. We crushed crooked Joe Biden's disastrous open borders bill. Crushed it. Mike Johnson did a very good job, and the whole group did a great job in Congress. We crushed. And let me just show you some voters in the swing state of Pennsylvania, how they feel. Play the clip. But no Democrats we spoke to here in Battleground, Pennsylvania, the president's birthplace, said the report would change their plans to vote for Biden a second time. I think in terms of the policy and kind of where the the country's going right now, I, I, you know, I'll favor him. Theater manager Rob Cash telling us he's also convinced by Biden's likely opponent. You still think he's head and shoulders over the other guy? Absolutely. Absolutely. The other guy's a joke. Trump is a joke. I'm sorry. There you have it, folks. Hit subscribe. Let's get to three million together. Thank you so much for uh, watching. And uh, thank you for all your support. Have a great day. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.